this is this is where my home is. I was born and bred on the boards. I, I learned to fish on the boards. I learned to swim in the boards. Um, I learned to to use boats uh, on the boards. Um, and uh, the it really is the place where I where I feel at home. The Norfolk Broads attract people from all over the world. It doesn't take long to see why with the picturesque scenery, wealth of wildlife and plentiful fish, sometimes. How's your luck been so far today? Well, I've had a few fish, uh, a couple of nice bream, but which is very rare, especially in here. We usually get a lot of small ones, but... Is there any particular bait you're using? A uh, bit of F1 sweet, a bit of brown breadcrumb, a bit of river mix, maggots and hemp. Is it like a secret, secret recipe? No, not at all. But there's anger bubbling below the surface after Natural England applied to block off a prime bream breeding ground, Hoveton Great Broad, as part of what it says is restoration work. So anglers in the, the Norfolk Broads are very passionate about what they do. So we've worked with the Environment Agency for many years um, as, a, as a voluntary workforce. So uh, providing uh, free manpower, free boats, uh, free levels of information, data to them to help their fisheries team to manage the broads. That information, that data, all that work that's been collected has effectively been thrown in the bin by the senior managers of the Environment Agency who have chosen to take the stance that their own fisheries specialists don't know what they're talking about. The data includes evidence collected by Royal Navy sonar equipment of fish movements into Hoveton Great Broad. Which is completely inaccessible. So this is the broad that is uh, going to effectively become landlocked for uh, as far as fish are concerned. The aim of the project is actually just Natural England wanting to make the water more clear and have more underwater plants. So the concept behind the biomanipulation is that you, uh, you remove the fish the fish, uh, particularly the small fish, feed on um, insects such as Daphnia. The Daphnia in turn feed on the algae cells that create coloured water. So if you remove the fish, you get more Daphnia, you get less algae, you get clear water, you get better light penetration and different plants can grow uh, within, within the broad. I don't think there's a problem with the algae. That's no different than what it was when I used to fish years ago. So. So this is not clear, clear enough for, for them? Apparently this isn't clear enough water. But as you can see, there's plenty of plant growth. More underwater plants means more work for the Broads Authority, which needs to clear paths for boats. So the ironic thing about the, uh, the, the lack of commercial boats uh, during the lockdown period was that uh, we saw water clarity which was even clearer than what we're seeing today. Uh, the uh, the knock-on effect of that was that the Boards Authority had to spend extra money and resource into actually cutting the weed um, that Natural England are trying so hard to uh, increase. Surely these two organisations should be talking together and making sure that the right efforts are going on in the right places. Natural England says blocking the entrances to the Broad will mean the Bream will breed in Solhouse Broad on the other side of the river. How Natural England knows this is unclear. Solhouse is another private broad, but there's a big difference. It is open to the public, whereas Hoveton is not. Great Hoveton Broad is a, a private broad. Uh, it's land, owned by certain uh, landowners. And they have uh, a small nature trail which is available for the public, um, which is accessed by this key heading here. Unfortunately, most of the time it seems to be, uh, seems to be shut. So currently at the moment, uh, it's actually closed to the public. So there's no access to this broad, which is uh, receiving all this uh, lottery heritage, heritage fund money for restoration work that most of the public will never get to see the benefit from. The tender for building the fish barriers is worth £249,000. So this is the second uh, proposed site of a fish barrier. So this is known as the dam. This is the main entrance onto uh, Great Hoveton Broad. As you can see, it's quite a substantial, substantial piece of water and the plans are to put 
a big structure across here to stop uh, all fish from being able to enter and exit the board. So the plan is um, to cho choose a time when the, uh, the fish are naturally swimming from the board out into the river. So when weather and tidal uh, influences uh, would, would promote that. To then close the barriers uh, and then to electrofish the board to remove any remaining fish stocks which is uh, fairly ambitious when we're talking about a board that's 100 acres. It's not clear how much the fish removal contract is worth, but the Broad's Angling Services Group estimates it at up to £150,000 and is worried it could turn out to be a waste of time. One of the concerns that has also been raised is that uh, this is a big body of water through here and uh, that actually in times of flood, um, the, the, it, it, it soaks up an awful lot of uh, the water and if, if, if water is restricted from going in there because these fish barriers are uh, clogged with uh, uh, floating debris then um, it could potentially increase the flooding risk for, the, for places like Horning and for Roxham. So one of the ironic things is we're told by the river engineers that uh, flooding wouldn't be an issue because actually in times of flood the river and the board connect over this land, which kind of would, you would imagine, would nullify the effect of the fish barrier in the first place. So every time we get a flood, the fish have an access back onto the board the whole process needs to be repeated. This restoration of boards is important, but in the process of doing so, we can't damage the fish stocks that support all the wildlife, such as the otters, the cormorants, the herons, the grebes, and the kingfishers, that are species that are so iconic to Norfolk and its tourism. If you have uh, a drastic reduction in fish stocks, you're gonna see a drastic reduction in predatory birds, such as the cormorant, uh, that, that survive on them. Uh, the bird organisations and the, um, uh, the bird watching community um, see cormorants as a, as a key species indicator. The BASG has a petition you can sign if you are concerned about Natural England's plans. This week the group starts lobbying MPs as part of a sustained campaign. Back at the shore though, the anglers have more immediate goals. Have had much luck? Uh, four or five good bream, a few roach. That's about it really at the moment. Uh, a little pass and shoulder bream, I believe. No, obviously not. Got another one on. Is that bream? That is, yeah. So that's, uh, that's what you're aiming for, is it? Well, anything really. Use a maggot to see what sort of turns up. 